So a dead body is discovered in a room which is air conditioned at 21 degrees. As soon as the body is discovered, its temperature is measured to be 28 degrees. Assuming a heat transfer constant of that particular value, and that the body was at 37 degrees at time of death, how long ago did the person die? And we're going to assume that this situation um, can be modelled with Newton's law of cooling, uh, which is given here. So just as a refresher as to what uh, everything is in this equation, the capital T is the temperature, and in this case it's going to be of the body that we're looking at. The little t is the time. K here is the heat transfer constant. So this is dependent on the um, object that you're looking at. So basically, the bigger the value, the quicker the object is going to cool down. This T again is, is temperature. And the last one on the end here, TA, that's the ambient temperature or the room temperature. Um, so yeah, whatever it is for the general uh, environment that your object is sitting in. So what this equation is really saying is that the rate of change of temperature with respect to time is proportional to the difference between the object's actual temperature and the ambient temperature. So if you have something that's really hot compared to the temperature of the room, it's going to cool quite quickly, or the temperature is going to reduce quite quickly down to whatever the ambient is. However, if you have something that's quite similar to the temperature of the room, then the rate that it cools at is going to be quite small. All right, so our first step here is going to be to solve this equation in order to get an expression for the temperature as a function of time. Once we've got that, we're going to go back and read the information to pick up um, what conditions we can use in order to find the constants. And then once we've got that, we should be able to solve for our unique solution and figure out um, how long ago the person actually died. So yeah, starting off here with our differential equation and trying to get something with t is equal to. So I'm going to try for separation of variables across the equal sign. So how I'm going to do that is I want this big T to be with this other big T. So I might shift it across um, the T minus A section. So if it's multiplied on this side, it's going to be divided on the other side. So I can write this as 1 over T minus TA. And we've got DT, DT. And then I need to separate the little T from the big T's. So I'm going to pop this to the other side of the equation. So we get 1 on T minus TA. Big dt is equal to k dt, the little one. So we've separated across the equal sign now, which means we should be able to integrate both sides. So when I integrate this with respect to my big t, remember that this ta is just a constant or a number. So when we integrate, we're going to go from uh, this to the log of what's on the bottom line. All right, again, remembering this is just a constant, so nothing special happens. And on the right hand side, we want to integrate uh, negative k with respect to little t. So this is we're going to become negative kt. And because we've done indefinite integrals, we need to have our little plus c um, appearing on the end. Now, next step is to try and get big t on its own. So since it's tied up within a log, I can do e to the power of the log in order to get um, the cancelling effect between the e and the log. However, I need to do the same thing to the other side to keep it equal, so that's where the e is coming from there. So e and log cancel each other out, so we're just left with the t minus ta. This I'll leave the same for the moment. And then I want t on its own, so I can shift this to the other side, and that means I just get my little um, plus ta on the end. Now this is a valid general solution, However, I can make it a little bit nicer by getting the C constant out of being in the, in the power. So how I can do that is separating um, so that I express um, this is e to the negative kt multiplied by e to the C. This comes from the power rule, which I'll just pop at the side, where if you have the same base, uh, you can combine the powers just by adding them together. So here I've done the opposite. I had them added, all right, and I want to separate them out. So now what I've got is e to the c, where overall that's just going to be a number. So rather than calling it e to the c, 
I'm going to introduce a new variable called capital A and I'm going to express it just as a capital A instead. So this here becomes the general solution uh, to my differential equation. So I've got quite a few constants in this, all right? My constants are the A, the K up here, which is the heat transfer constant, and TA, which is the ambient temperature. So hopefully I've got three pieces of information up in the question to be able to solve for those three constants. So let's go have a look. So up here, um, we're told that our room is air conditioned at 21 degrees. So what that's inferring is that the room temperature or the ambient temperature is 21. So that's one piece of information. We're told that as soon as the body is discovered, its temperature is measured to be 28 degrees. So that's another piece of information that we can write out. So I'm going to write at T disk for discover. Um, the temperature is 28. So we're going to assume a heat transfer constant of 0 0.033, and the units for that are minutes inverse. And at the time of death, the body was at 37 degrees Celsius. So at T death, um, sorry, capital T is 37. So a couple of these pieces of information are really easy. So for example, TA is 21 and K is 0 0.033 can get directly slotted into our equation. These two here are a little bit more tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the time that the person died is going to be my initial condition. So I'm going to set that to be equal to T is 0. And then in a moment, what we're going to do is try and figure out what time it was uh, when the temperature hit 28. So at this point, the three kind of pieces of information that I'm going to use is TA, K, and this one here, my initial condition. So let's go down and substitute those in. So not much we can do about T for the moment or A for the moment, but we do have K. And, and we do have TA, that was 21. So we've got two pieces. The last um, constant is going to come from the third piece of information, which was the one that when T is equal to zero, we're assuming that's going to be the time of death. So the temperature is equal to 37. So let's go ahead and substitute this in. So T goes to zero. So 37 minus the 21, that goes to 16. And, oh, I can even do better than that. Um, e to the power of, this is going to go to 0, is 1. So we get A times 1. So overall, A is just directly equal to 16 for our constant. So now all I need to do is substitute that back in to have all of my constants in the equation. So it'll be 16e to the negative 0.033t plus 21. So this here is the unique solution such that I can figure out what the temperature is at any given time. So the time that I'm specifically interested in is when I have a temperature of 28 degrees. Because as I acknowledged up here, all right, that's my time of discovery. Okay, so if I solve for when T is equal to um, 28 degrees, I'm going to get the answer to my question, which is how long ago did the person die? So let's come down and have a look. So at T equals what? Capital T equals 28. So popping it in, we get this. So now it's just a case of solving for the only unknown, which is t. So I'll start by doing 28 minus 21, which leaves me with 7. Next, what I'm going to do is divide everything by 16. So I get 7 on 16, and I'm just left with the e on the other side. Now I want to get t on its own. So since it's tied up in the power, what I'm going to need to do is log both sides of my equation. And I know that when I log something that is um, got an E in it, all that happens is that the log, oop, the log and the E cancel out with each other, 
and I end up with just what's up in the power falling out. So I end up with this negative 0.033t. And my final step is just to rearrange for t on its own. So if I divide by that um, small negative number, negative 0.033, I find out that uh, t is approximately equal to 25.1 and the units are going to be minutes um, since that's what we were working in above. So if I was to plot this to kind of see what it uh, looks like graphically, remember my two kind of variables are capital T for temperature, which we're measuring in degrees Celsius, and little t for time, which we're measuring in minutes. So we said that the time of death was being considered as t is equal to zero, and that was up here at 37 degrees. Okay, so what we would expect is if we plot our unique solution, this one here onto the graph, we would be passing through the point um, 37 at the beginning of time. What we should see as well is that this um, drops off and it approaches as it gets further and further toward t is infinity. Um, the value of our ambient temperature, which was 21 degrees here. Finally, the other point that we're interested in was the time of um, discovery, which was when the body had reached like 28 degrees. Okay, so that would correspond to say this point on the graph, which should be at a time of the 25.1. So this point is the time of death, and this point here is the time of discovery. Now, I just want to point out that there is um, another common way of trying to do this, uh, which is where you say the time of discovery is equal to t equals zero when you set your conditions. This will work exactly the same um, in that you should, you'll get the same answer for the difference between time of death and time of discovery of 25.1. However, you will get a slightly different value for the constant um, based on that situation. The other thing is you will end up with a negative number when you go through and solve for the time. That's because it's telling you that the time of death happened before the time of discovery. Okay, so that situation occurs when you say, um, rather than as we did up here, that the time of death was the initial condition, when you say that the time of discovery was the initial condition and is zero here. So that's all there is in terms of this question.